All right, traders, a very warm welcome to you all. I am Devang Mera, and this is the episode five of TFA Talks. So today we'll discuss about. We have a good agenda lined up. We discuss about what happened in Nifty, Nifty Bank today, and what were the stocks that we had recommended yesterday. How did they fare today? Also, we'll talk about then what can we expect in Nifty, Nifty Bank tomorrow. What are the levels to trade? And then we'll talk about the stocks that we can trade for tomorrow, which is the October fourteenth, twenty twenty. Wednesday. So today we asked our mentorship clients and TFA Daily clients to send us a list of stocks for us to analyze. So today we have a long list of stocks to analyze. So I'll request you to all watch it till the end. Otherwise, what you can do is in the description below, I'm leaving all the stocks that we'll be talking about with the exact timings when we are discussing those stocks. So you can skip to that part if you are not interested to watch the whole video. All right, guys. So let's get started. So first, let's look at the uh, global markets today. For a change, we are seeing UK in red. So FTSE 100 is down about one uh, percent. The DAX of Germany is down about 1.22 percent. So that's for a change. And also, the Dow Jones is down 0.50 percent. S&P 500 is down. Nasdaq is trading marginally flat. So that's one thing. So today, we are seeing some kind of pressure in the global markets. Number two, the dollar index. Even SGX is around 11880. So that's also trading about 50 points lower than the closing of today. The dollar index is something you have to watch, and I've been saying it in all of my videos. Incorporate this in your analysis. So the dollar index, and so what is the dollar index? It basically tells you how strong is the dollar against about six to seven currencies of the world. So today you can see dollar index has gone up a lot. It's gone up from 93. It's gone up all the way to 93.5. so dollar index and the emerging market markets are inversely related so if the dollar index starts to fall you you saw that you know when dollar was falling the last couple of days we saw a very big rally in nifty and when dollar starts to rise this gives an indication that markets are again going to start to correct or they're going to start to fall so we'll see about that tomorrow so if dollar starts to trade above 93.5 this can give a bit of a pressure to the markets going forward right so let's have a look at nifty what did we plan to do in nifty nifty bank etc today was the moratorium hearing it's it has got again uh, postponed to tomorrow i believe tomorrow is the last day it will not be further adjourned so tomorrow will be a volatile trade and it's going to give a big movement on either of the sides depending what the verdict is going to be so i think the verdict will be around around 11 or 12 so we'll keep you posted in our tfa daily forum right so today uh, yesterday we got a spinning top doji and the rule of a spinning top doji as we discussed yesterday was whenever either of the sides are broken you will continue the movement there so we discussed that after a single short rally you will get some kind of either a price correction time correction or we can get a dip called a price correction so any of these things is possible today what we happened what happened in markets where we got a volatile market it was a sideways market so you got a, another doji lined up so tomorrow you know just as we discussed uh, the levels that we had given you uh, for uh, uh, yesterday in the video so yesterday we discussed if 870 was broken you had to try to go short but today the 870 level was never broken so i personally didn't take any trade in nifty and i'm happy i didn't take any trade because it was just a whiplash and a volatile market going forward so i was not interested in nifty at the same time the highs of yesterday were not broken so i could not take a long trade in nifty as well so i kept out of nifty talking about bank nifty it was a little bit different today bank nifty has fallen about 1% so the spinning top doji formed yesterday has been confirmed and there the markets have corrected today if you look at the internals you can see some kind of bearish pressure in the markets and uh, we had given you a level to go short below 23570 and you have uh, got the closing of 23430 so you would have made some money if you had gone short on bank nifty today so there is bearish pressure on bank nifty but nifty is still trying to hold nifty is trying to hold because of reliance reliance went up 2% today contrary to what we were expecting we wanted to go short on reliance but the opportunity never came so the trade went missing i'm happy for that at the same time the it sector continues to hold the market so the it sector today was again up about 1.3% 
So companies like Infosys, etc. have been holding Nifty. So till these companies start to reverse and book some profit, we cannot see a correction in Nifty. But banks, you know, led by HDFC, Axis, ICICI, have started to fall, leading to a fall in Bank Nifty. So what are the stocks that we had given yesterday? Let's start with them. So yesterday we gave you uh, a short position on HDFC Bank. We initiated a short call on HDFC Bank and HDFC Bank today around in a, even in our mentorship group we have given a short below 1206 and we got a good 10 rupee movement in HDFC Bank. So that was a good trade. The other short that we had given was Bajaj Finance in the in the TFA talk video yesterday. We told you to go short below 3300. We got a really good short retest and you got a 70 to 80 point profit in Bajaj Finance. And finally, we also gave a shot on Larson and Tuvro below 900 round number. And today you got an intraday low of 888. So you got a 12 rupee movement even on Larson and Tuvro. Sipla was another stock which has given some profit but might have hit a stop loss also. So I asked you all to go long on Sipla above 820. So above 820 within the next 5 minutes you got a target of 830. So if you hadn't exited then you probably would have hit a stop loss. And we saw a very big selling in pharma sector today uh, in the last uh, half an hour of the trade. So all the companies uh, which we were long on have shown a considerable amount of correction. So pharma has fallen down considerably today. So that is why what we discussed in Nifty, Bank Nifty and the stocks. Everything turned out well except Cipla maybe could have it a stop loss and Reliance. We couldn't trade that. So I'm happy markets have obliged us today. Uh, let's have a look at what we can plan for tomorrow. Right. So what can we do for tomorrow? I have some levels that I would like to give you. Again, let's have a look at Nifty on the externals. You can see it's a single shot movement. I made it quite clear. You have to try to at least come to retest the 11,800 level. And today again, you have got some kind of indecision candle. So you can see that we are getting a lower high formation. That's something in itself is bearish. By the way, today the FIDI data is also bearish. Another thing we have to keep in the mind. So I would say something very simple. Nifty till now has never broken the lows. So if you see every day, you are getting a higher low, higher low, higher low. So I think now is one time where the lows can be broken. So if tomorrow you are breaking these lows, so the spinning top doji has given you high and low. So whichever side you are breaking, the movement is going to happen there and it's going to be happening a wild movement. Considering tomorrow is the moratorium verdict. So tomorrow, uh, Nifty obviously looks a little bit handled, but Bank Nifty is kind of bearish. If I look at the internals, the levels will be quite clear. My levels given yesterday and today will remain the same. I will try to go short when I go below 870 on Nifty. So if you cross below 11870 on Nifty, you have to increase your short exposure. It can give you a very good momentum to the downside. Your target will be 11,800. This zone is a uh, very crucial. If let's say markets take a reversal from here, they'll continue to be bullish. You can try to exit here. But if you start closing below and trading below this level for about 15, 20 minutes, the down movement will continue and it will continue fast because you have got a doji on the daily chart. So below 11,800, you have to expect for a target of 11,750 on Nifty. These are the levels for the downside. Uh, again, it depends where the markets open. If markets open, for example, a very big gap down, then you have to see price action, then these levels becomes quite insignificant. The best entries will be if your markets open flat. On the upside, your levels are again quite similar. Above 980, 11,980 is a very strong resistance. As long as this is not crossed, you know, you're not going to go higher. So tomorrow, if in the first half you try to cross 11,980, so any 15 minute closing above 11,980 will trigger a buy signal and you will be seeing a lot of buying above the 12,000 psychological level. Sorry. So you have to keep these levels in mind. They are quite important going forward. So that's about Nifty. Again, it's quite important where you open. Flat opening will be ideal for a selling side. If you get a good gap up or a good gap down, then you have to see price action to take a further decision. Let's talk about Bank Nifty now. Uh, looking at the daily chart of Bank Nifty, yes, Bank Nifty is weak. We have taken somewhat of a resistance and we might try to go 
tomorrow to test the 23,150 level at least. So banks do seem a little bit weaker as compared to the Nifty companies. Looking at the internals of Bank Nifty. So Bank Nifty is currently again very stable at these levels which is the 11,000, sorry, 23,430 to 400, uh, 440 levels. It's a very good resistance earlier has now turned into a support. So tomorrow the ideal situation is to open a flat market and immediately get a pressure to the downside. That can give you the ideal profit. Again, if it's a gap up or a gap down, you have to wait for price action. On the upside, uh, obviously I'm more skewed on the downside tomorrow, but you know, it doesn't matter what I think. You have to play by the levels and you have to keep a stop loss intact. On the upside, the level of 23,800, I would say, let's take it a round number, 780 to 800 is a very strong resistance. If this is taken out, you will be going towards the 24,150 level. The levels will be coming. At the same time, on the downside, if we are breaking the 23,430 levels, then we are moving for a 23,000 levels. So this is a level which can be identified tomorrow considering what is the verdict of the Supreme Court. So if Supreme Court gives a good verdict, you know, favoring the banks, then Bank Nifty can cross higher and we can take a long trade above this. Otherwise, we go short below 430 for targets of 23,100 and for the target of 22,950 or 23,000. Below that is a bonus and you'll have to see price action where you can go. But 22,800 looks like a good target. If let's say we get a very big selling day tomorrow, followed by a 22,600, again a very strong number. So these are the numbers that we have to keep in mind going forward. So do make sure where the market's open. Do not trade just uh, based on the basis of what I have said. Use your analysis and always consult your financial advisor. So that's it about Nifty and Bank Nifty. So let's now talk about what are the stocks that we can trade tomorrow. So um, one of the stocks that I would like to talk about before I get into all of this is PI Industries. This is one stock which is testing my patience. And let's say markets fall tomorrow, which look quite likely now, you know, because we have gone up single shot 1100 points, markets might fall and give you a correction of 100, 200 points. So whenever markets fall, obviously the uh, consumers would like to move the, the market participants, sorry, would like to move to the safer sectors like technology, pharma, maybe the chemical and the fertilizer. So PI industry is a very good, uh, it's a stock very well placed right now in the chemical fertilizer industry. So you can see very well on the PI industries chart. Uh, this is a very, very strong resistance going forward 2060. And currently it's giving you a build up around 2060. So what was happening earlier was you were taking a resistance and falling down every single time. Now we started building up 2060. So if you get a closing above 2060, maybe on a 15 minute chart, that can be a very good signal to go long and you would be getting an explosive move, I would say about 150 to 200 points going forward. So you can get a target of about 20 to 60 in a matter of a couple of days. So that was PI Industries. You can go long above 20 to 60 is closing on 15 minute basis or on a daily basis for a target of about 150 to 200 points positional. Okay, so let's start off with the, uh, with the stock doubts that you had. Uh, you have messaged us. If you want us to analyze any charts, you can send us a message on Instagram or you can WhatsApp us at 8080343031. So I'll start off with my mentorship clients. So first I have Swaraj. He wants me to analyze uh, Jubilant Life Science. Right. So Jubilant Life Science is currently, I would say, in like a no trade zone for me. Uh, I have a very good support placed at 650. Another very crucial support would come around the current market levels which I feel it has breached. So I would say currently you're avoiding the stock. I do not see any buying pressure coming in right now. If a buying pressure comes in, then we can try to go long. But currently I'm not really interested. If you ask me, well, will I be interested on the downside? I will not be. But the reason will be because I've got a very good power move into, into a support. So this might very well be a false breakout. I want something like a build up. Uh, you know going forward so I can get a good confirmed move. So any power move It's something I would like to ignore But if you do want to trade you can try small quantity to or short I'm not going long right now, 
maybe around 650s but if you want to buy for long term this is one area you can try to go long i would say it's a very safe level 650 is a very strong support of jubilant life science going forward swaraj also has a doubt for jubilant foodworks so let's talk about that right so jubilant foodworks is a very at a very uh, crazy juncture right now it's it's given something like a double top formation so the double top will get active only when these lows are broken. So when the 2239 low is broken, only then you can get a double top movement. So this can give you maybe a, a, a 150 point correction, you know, going all the way to 2120 also. But that's not happened right now. Today we have got something like an inverted hammer formation. So it's quite possible you can take a rebound and try to go all the way up to 2400 also. So it will be very important what you're doing. So if let's say today tomorrow the highs of uh, today are broken which is about 23 uh, 23 12 if these levels are broken then you can go long for sure because it's a good support you can have a tight stop loss for a target on position of 24 44 otherwise if tomorrow your lows are broken of 22 38 you can initiate a short even on the intraday basis for you know going targets going down it can be uh, about 22 12 etc and followed by maybe a 21.76 depending on the correction we see in the market okay so the next doubt is by Sahu Fernandez we have Marico okay so Marico again is the stocks I'm concerned with right now I would like to add going further so I have discussed this in my previous TFA talks video also 380 is a crucial level right if that is knocked off you will get a 20 rupee movement immediately so 400 becomes a target Otherwise, currently a support is placed at 360 round number. So you might see some kind of buying here. If you do not, if you see some buying, you can go long until 376. Otherwise, if this level is broken, you can see a level again of 340. So that is for Marico. And then continued by Sipla. So Sipla did give some kind of false breakout. It had got me today, but uh, the resistance is quite crucial. It has been uh, building up and testing the level. It's testing this level quite for quite some time so the level starts to become weak so we will again have to wait for a closing above that level uh, you can also see some kind of uh, ascending triangle formation on sipla so as long as these levels are held you are good to go you know if you start to break the low of today of 777 you might get some selling pressure considering you will break the ascending triangle otherwise we can expect a, a movement again back to the resistance again if you want to buy the stock you'll have to wait for a closing above 820 so this time i'll suggest wait for a daily closing above 820 and go long on a positional basis because you can get a very good movement considering it is the all-time high of sipla and sipla will be leading the pharma space and you have a doubt sahu also has a doubt for larson and tubro so larson and tubro was a stock we had given yesterday so now it's trading below 900 so you might Try to take the psychological 900 again as a resistance so again it becomes quite important where do you want to trade we have a very strong uh, resistance placed around here you are getting some kind of a double top formation and you know if market starts to fall tomorrow you might get a movement to 880 so for me the larson and tubro move has happened uh, it happened today we made good money today tomorrow i'm not really concerned what larson and tubro is doing i would be really concerned when these 880 levels are broken or maybe a 9, 920 level on the upside is broken otherwise i'm currently in a fix so i would not like to trade larson and tubro so kushal has a doubt for irctc and glenmark okay so irctc has been moving in a range for a long long time i think we are waiting for a trigger on irctc some kind of positive announcement which can fuel up either a movement on the downside or a movement on the upside but currently it's in a no trading zone personally i had bought it about three four months back and i'm still stuck in the same position i'm kind of holding because the fundamentals of the company are good but i'm just stuck in a time correction kind of place so the support of irctc is, is placed around 1320s so it is likely irctc will take a support here if these levels are broken we can expect a movement till 1250 also followed by 1200 on the upside you can expect a movement above 1400 to uh, 1467 followed by even a 1550 movements but currently we are in a sideways market the rule of a sideways market is you buy at support and sell at resistance and we can't hope for a breakout 
Uh, next we have Glenmark. So Glenmark was another stock we I did give a recommendation to the mentorship clients today. So it did move again above 500. We got a quick scale, but again it retested the resistance. So you can go long on Glenmark only above 500. Only above 500 will you become safe. That's for a risky investor. If you want to be extremely safe, you have to try to buy. I would say above 510 or a 515 to be precise. Above that you can get a very good momentum to 570. But currently, Glenmark is kind of building up and it is in a range. So unless until this range is broken, I can't do anything. So I'll have to wait for, for the markets to tell me where it is expected to go. So Harsh Raj from Gujarat has a doubt for Praj Industries. I personally never traded in the stock, but I'll try to do justice. A very strong resistance at 77, followed by a very strong support at 64. So these are the levels. Also, we have some kind of um, a partial, I would say, a weak support placed at the current market level. So if you see a re rebound tomorrow, it can, it's an inverted hammer pattern at support. So it gives you a rebound tomorrow. If you go above the highs of today, above 73.5, you can again try to go to 78. That's a possibility. So we'll again see. But if you go down further, it will try to give you a false breakout. The reason is it's a power move into resistance. So on the selling side, I will sell only if you go uh, give me a build up and then go down. Otherwise, I'm not really interested. Um, going forward, we have uh, Bharti Airtel and Mahanagar Gas. So on the Bharti Airtel front. So Bharti Airtel did have a positive news today. Uh, the subscribers have increased finally after a very long time. They are in the positive territory. So Airtel did take it positively, but then again, it let off the gains. Uh, it has closed just marginally higher. Um, so the levels remain safe for Airtel. 400 crucial, 420 is also crucial. So if, if it comes to, if let's say tomorrow it starts to trade below, this is the current market price, it will try to go to 400. And below 400, we can see a very big fall even to 360. But I believe Airtel, considering the positive sentiment, can give you a momentum, sorry, and a support at a 400 level. Otherwise, uh, on the long side, I would wait for 400 or I would wait for these... Uh, the levels to be broken i do get some kind of a trend line of forming so once this trend line is broken which is around 430 levels only then i can try to go long Mahanagar gas so all the the gasoline stocks were under pressure for a couple of days because of the uh, government announcement i think they have increased the prices of gas i'm not sure what the announcement was but uh, that that was the reason why natural gas commodity the october which went up yesterday by five six percent and the, st the stocks, Mahanagar, Gujarat, they have been underperforming for the last one, two days. Um, so Mahanagar Gas has given a breakdown, as I told you guys, uh, due to the announcement, it has not been taken well by the companies. Gujarat Gas, uh, Mahanagar Gas, Indrabras Gas, all of them are, Adani Gas, uh, they are all in a little bit of a pressure right now. So it has given a very good breakdown. So you are getting some kind of minor support at 780. What my suggestion would be, Obviously, if you break today's low, you can again go short. But if you get a retest, that would be ideal and try to go short at this point of time. But obviously, if you break today's low, you can try to go short even on a positional basis for a target maybe to 670. Because after these levels, after a 780, I do not have any significant level. So I will be under pressure. So I do not recommend to buy Mahanagar at this price. Let the dust settle and then we'll try to get it. Right. So next, uh, uh, I have ICICI Bank and Davur by Shri from Pune. So uh, Bank Nifty was in stress today. We have got an evening star pattern. That's good. We have got an evening star pattern. It's a bearish pattern. It's a three candlestick pattern, uh, followed by a, basically a doji, followed by a gap down, closing into the first candle. So it's a bearish stock right now. You can try to go short below 393 or a 390 level. I can probably look at the 15 minute chart. Yes, this level is quite significant. 393 below or 390, whatever you like. Below that, you can get a very good momentum on the downside considering Bank Nifty is weak. You have a good support at 390 followed by a support of 382. So these levels automatically become targets. On the upside, uh, I would like to go long only maybe above 400. It's a round number. If I start to trade, 15 minute closing above 400, that's the only time I would like to go long. Otherwise, I'm ignoring. Dabur. 
so davur again uh, let's go on the daily chart to understand what's happening on davur so davur a couple of sessions back himale had mentioned it's a bearish stock and we got a very good resistance going here so it has a very good psychological support at a 500 level the 500 level or even the 511 level currently is a very good support so try to see what you do at 511 currently i am not interested in davur um, fmcg particularly i am not really looking forward to that i am looking at the explosive sectors right now like uh, banks and bfcs for tomorrow because tomorrow is the moratorium verdict so nbfc and bank will be in focus rather than fmcg so tomorrow i'm not really concerned what davur does but you have some kind of support at 511 510 below that if you take a good support here you can go long till 535 if you start trading below today's low you will try to get a 482 or maybe a psychological 500 Okay, so Mr. R K Bandari has uh, questions about Divis and Dr. Reddy. So see, uh, Pharma today had a very big sell-off. It was a very big sell-off in the last couple of minutes. That's the reason why all the pharma companies did close in red and quite significantly. I had given Divis buy a couple of sessions back, but again, looks like the charts are not looking quite good. I do get some kind of patterns here. I would like to make some suggestions. This three thousand level is quite strong. as long as it holds you are good to go but once the 3000 level is broken on a 15 minute chart immediately go short i would say buy some puts of divis go short on intraday basis you will make a lot of money till 2800 target right now we also get some kind of a, a resistance trend line so you are kind of bearish on the stock uh, you might try to go down to 3k we'll try to see what happens but as long as 3k is holding you are good to go and if you are breaking this trend line on the upside then the targets on the upside are intact which come to 3360 dr reddy is another stock i liked i want i have gone long on the stock today i recommended to go long on the stock today we did that touch our intraday high of 5337 which was our first target but again due to the pharma selling spree it has fallen down significantly so again we are in a range bound market so if you look at the chart it's a bullish stock once it breaks out convincingly of this range you are going to go to 6000 that's for sure right but do consult your advisor but right now you are still stuck in a range so as long as the range is holding you can't do anything you have to wait for this range to be broken on either side if it breaks down you can see a 4977 followed by even a 4843 these levels are possible if it breaks on the upside you will get 5337 today's high as well as 5500 followed by 6000 these levels can come but let's wait to see where the range breaks right <clears throat> so jubin and life have already discussed mr ashish uh, shreyansh from maharashtra mumbai has a doubt doubt about bansali engineering so let's discuss about that again not a stock i have traded but i'll try to do justice um, so see what happened was we got a good flag kind of formation and then a movement to the upside So I think the flag target for the flag was already achieved. If I look at the target for the flag, about twenty-four uh, rupees, I think some yeah it has al- almost been achieved. So now let's let's try to see what happens. Currently it doesn't look really interesting. You are ca- getting some kind of support at these levels. So as long as these levels hold, you are okay. You might try to go higher, but uh, you might also get a correction. But if you do get a correction. uh you can get a correction even till 74 levels it's a quite important level followed by a 70 level these are quite important on the upside resistance is placed around 90 100 level round number so you'll have to see for any fresh longs i would suggest to wait for some more price action i do not have a confirmed decision right now so we'll have to wait it out we have anjan anjani portland cement so let's talk about that okay right so anjani is doing good um, the cement sector has been in focus all the cement stocks are doing very very well um, anjani also is giving something like a ascending triangle i believe it's given some kind of breakout today so tomorrow if you cross the highs of set by today basically if you try to clo- close on a 15 minute chart above 200 you can get a move even to a 210 so that's something which can which you can do tomorrow olympic pharma Olympic Pharma. Okay, so Olympic Pharma is again something what Dr. Reddy is doing. You are stuck in a range, 
alembic pharma is stuck in some kind of range so you can do something like buy here and sell at resistance but i am basically a breakout kind of trader so i would like to wait for some kind of explosive move so if you trade below a 940 level you can get a good down uh, breakdown which can give you very big target uh, considering we have some kind of inverted flag formation at the same time only above 1000 1020 can you get a breakout otherwise we are stuck in some kind of range you know going forward infosys infosys has been doing extremely well so it's going it's going quite good it's got a good marubozu candle so let's see what it does you know i currently have no targets for infosys the reason being i can't enter a trade right now because i have no idea what the stop loss is so i will never enter a trade without knowing what the stop loss is so i again feel it is a great sector but currently it is kind of overvalued so i would like to see some kind of dip in it sector and at this dip i will place my stop loss and try to buy here for targets or at a higher level but at the current juncture i am not not really looking for infosys to buy or any it company to buy okay so adarsh from chennai you have a doubt for kochi in shipyard let's talk about that now okay so kochi in shipyard uh, right so you have a good resistance trend line being followed here so the stock is in a bearish structure at the same time we have some kind of support placed here um, so as long as the support holds you could to go you are you might try to go down again up again to 335 it's a possibility but crucial levels for kochi shipyard are i would say around 300 level so if you start to trade below 300 then you have to if you are in the stock already you will have to exit or if you are not in the stock you will have to uh, short the stock it can give you very good momentum even till a 270 target reliance reliance has done crazy today it's done a, a good job today so reliance uh, it's given a ascending triangle breakout so we'll have to see tomorrow how it performs if it starts to trade above today's high it will give you momentum till 2330 also followed by a 2350 so tomorrow if you start trading above the 23 20 the today's high which is uh, 2285 you can get a good momentum on the upside till 2300 and 2350 the moment you start to trade below the trend line so maybe around 2230 levels you will get a breakdown which will make your markets fall you can even fall down to 2180 and finally you have sbi and mother sun sumi right so sbi c sbi remember one thing 200 is a round number and sbi always follows that number it's it's got a very strong resistance at 200 and even uh, yesterday it tested the level and has fallen down so sbi currently i'm not on the buy side you can go long on sbi either when the 200 level is broken on the daily chart or you can try to find some kind of support to go long um, so maybe you can try for 186 this is one level so around 180 to 186 is a safe level so if you get a good downfall let's say the verdict is not good tomorrow you might get a correction in the bank so maybe around 180 to 186 something i would like to accumulate as we are on you also have a doubt for mother sun sumi so let's talk about that so again mother sun sumi is a bearish structure it's doing it's giving you a bearish structure you have a downward trend line so i'm not looking to buy right now i um, I would be buying the stock only when you start trading higher above this trend line. So maybe above one twenty something I'm looking at. Also, you have some kind of a support trend line and a horizontal trend line. So maybe I would say below one one uh, below hundred and eight hundred and nine, you can try to short the stock for a target of hundred. That's quite possible. Uh, so we'll see how the auto sector fares, and we can try to do that tomorrow. So below hundred and nine hundred and eight, we can try to short. and maybe above 120 only we'll try to go long otherwise we are in something like a descending triangle formation so not really interested in that sense yeah okay i think i've covered my mentorship clients doubts so now let's have a look at the dfa daily clients who have sent us a lot of charts so we'll try to uh, understand them so first um, we have <coughs> sorry okay so we have larsen and dubre and bharti yes we've already discussed that so i'll move forward um so chetan he has a doubt for the banking sector so see banking sector i have given a view in nifty bank you can try to go short uh, if you go below 23430 that's a good shorting opportunity all depends upon what will happen tomorrow in the verdict of supreme court 
ओके एच डी एफ सी ओके सो एच डी एफ सी इज कंसॉलिडेटिंग एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम नाइनटीन फोर्टी हैज प्रूव आउट टू बी अ वेरी गुड कंसॉलिडेशन जोन आई वुड से इट कैन इट कैन करेक्ट टेल नाइनटीन हंड्रेड आई थिंक इट्स पॉसिबल मे बी अराउंड नाइनटीन हंड्रेड इफ यू गेट सम काइंड ऑफ बाइंग अपॉर्चुनिटी वी लाइक टू कवर इट दैन बट राइट नाउ आई एम नॉट गोइंग बी अ बायर ऑन एच डी एफ सी टूमोरो अगेन इज इंपॉर्टेंट डे फॉर दीज कंपनीज दी एन पी एफ सी हाउसिंग डेवलपमेंट कंपनीज द बैंक्स सो टूमोरो इफ यू गेट सम करेक्शन इफ यू गेट सम गुड bullish candle at 1900 then i'll try to buy but currently i'm on the hold not nothing interesting on this chart if i look at the internals maybe i can find something interesting yes i i can uh, we can get a good selling opportunity below these levels so the current market price of 1940 below these levels we can get a good sell maybe till 1900 so it will be on the bearish side tomorrow we also can see a trend line a resistance going forward I would like to go long on HDFC only above nineteen eighties. Otherwise, it's in a no trading zone for me. Okay, so Samir, I have answered the doubt. L and T have already cleared. Okay, so another question was JB Chemicals by uh, Akshay Patni. So let's have a look at that. The sector is quite good. The chemical and fundamental sector is quite good. I do not know which one is the uh, ticker for JB Chemicals. Uh, Do not know the ticker. Um, so what you can do is uh, you can just leave me a message after that, and I'll uh, clear it out. Sorry, I don't know the ticker for JB Chemicals. Okay, so we have a doubt from Manpreet talking about PVR. Let's talk about PVR. Okay, let's have a look at the daily structure of PVR. So the PV PVR, as we discussed, had to fill this gap. So now PVR has to decide: will it try to go higher or go down further? So this level is quite important, which is the Twelve hundred and forty levels. The gap has been filled. It is possible you can try to go higher after the gap filling. It is also possible that you try to go to eleven sixties. These levels are also possible. If I look at the fifteen-minute chart, I'll get a very good idea of what is happening. So PVR did give a breakdown today. Twelve forty-eight was a very strong level. It broke out. It has retested. So again tomorrow on a short side below twelve twenty-five can be a short side on PVR. so that would mean that pvr doesn't want to go higher it's, it wants to go to a 1160 level so below 1220 levels i think i can try to go short okay so i have discussed infosys already vedanta so vedanta now i would say hold right now avoid the stock uh, personally i sold my holdings at 140 i did not want to get in the controversy of delisting because i knew people would set, set in price of 300 250 etc so what i have done in vedanta i have exited but should you re-enter that's the question you can re-enter i would say let's wait for more clarity on the dividend front so because you have to understand vedanta hindustan zinc etc these are the highest paying dividend companies in india so let's wait let's await a clarity on the dividend front and let's also wait await uh, let's also wait for some kind of stability in the stock the stock is trading lower it can go lower even to 88 also maybe to 77 so currently a very strong resistance i would say is placed at 113 or 114 a strong support is placed at 96 it's a strong support below these levels we can get 88 also we can also get 76 on the upside we can get 113 right now but let's wait for some time and for the room to clear and see where vedanta is going whether it will live up to the expectations so we have panakia biotech let's talk about that kushal um so panakia biotech is at a very very strong support right now of 180 it's a very very strong support uh, it is giving you something like a descending triangle formation so if you start to trade if you close below 180 it can give you a very good fall it can give you a fall till even 160 or maybe a 150 these levels are quite possible at the same time if you go start trading above 200 200 down number is important above 200 will be a good buy currently it's a bearish structure it is also possible you will try to move in this consolidated range and finally breaking down for a target of 160 so tomorrow make sure where it trades below 180 you can get a very very good fall on the downside right so the next stock is itc i will talk about itc now by hardik soni Okay, ITC. My analysis is very simple because I'm also in this trade. 
ITC uh, has a very good support at 165. It's a very very good support of ITC. At the same time, we have a very strong resistance at 175. As long as you are in the range, you have to avoid. Just wait for a breakout on either side. If you break out higher, you are going for a 180 target, followed by maybe a 192 target, followed by a 200 target. But if you break to the downside, then 155 levels will come, followed by 140 or 150 levels. But these levels you get on the downside will be very good on an investing uh, from an investing point of view. So I'll just take a couple of more questions. Um, we have a Tata Power by Venu Gopal. So I'll just take three to four more stocks and then we'll wind up for the day. Tata Power. So Tata Power has a, a very good support actually placed here. It's got a very good support placed here. So if you get some bullishness from here, you can try to go higher to 56. But uh, personally, I am not in the power and you know the, the sector. You also have a good, you actually have a very good level here. If you take my professional opinion, you have a very good confluence of support, a dynamic and a horizontal support. So it's likely Tata Power takes a rebound. If it doesn't, if it starts to go below, then you will get a 50 rupees level followed by a 45 rupees level. On the upside, you can try to buy small quantity for targets of 56, targets of 58 and then targets of 63. So this is a very, very strong support. Hopefully it is held. Otherwise you can get a breakdown. Yeah, so Mr. Sukhveer asked about Wipro. So yes, uh, I have a commentary on Wipro. I'll just talk about that. Um, Wipro, I think, has given marginally lower results, uh, poor results. Uh, I think TCS has done quite much better than that. But I'll just read you out the commentary on Wipro. So Wipro's result, uh, the profits were... Just one second. Yeah, so, so I've got some statements from the Wipro uh, executives. So Wipro has said that the new H H1B rules will not, the visa rules will not impact the business. So that is a positive. Number two, they are aiming to grab a large number of deals in quarter three. That's again a positive. And uh, they are also saying that the demand and uh, consumption in the demand environment, sorry, and the deal pipeline environment has improved. So they are getting good orders. Um, going forward with the results, the EBITDA margin is 19.2% for this quarter so versus 19%. So as I said, marginally higher, not much of a difference. The EBITDA for quarter two is at 28.35 billion versus 27.82 billion. Again, marginally higher, not something I expected. Um, further, um, I feel they have yeah they have some acquisitions. They are planning to acquire Eximinus Design LLC, an American limited liability corporation, and Eximinus Design India for one billion rupees. So that's something the markets would like to track. They have also approved the share buyback up to ninety five billion at the price of four hundred. These are some positives. Followed by the net profit is twenty four point six versus twenty five, marginally lower. So we have to see, let's have a look at what the ADRs are doing to give us a quick view of what Wipro uh, wants to do for us. So the ADRs are trading lower. Yep, they are down 2%. So it's not taken well by America. So let's see what happens tomorrow. I think uh, they're not very good results. So markets will not really react on a very positive note, but it can trade lower as you can see on the ADR. Okay. Right. And last, let's have a last doubt is GMM Fordler. Um, so see, GMM Fordler is another interesting story. I personally like the stock. So the reason it fell down is because of the OFS, the offer for sale. So whenever an offer for sale happens, example, Hindustan Aeronautics, uh, Bharat Dynamics. So the price always comes down to that level because a lot of shares are offered for sale. So 3500 was the bid level for the OFS and currently you are at this level. I would personally recommend go long. It's a very good company. You should keep a one, two year time horizon. It can easily give you a 6,000 levels in a time period of one, two years. So currently my view is be long on this company from a long term perspective. Okay. We have also another doubt of uh, Mindtree by Harsh Jindal. So IT sector C, my view is same. IT sector, uh, it's quite overvalued. I need to see a pullback when it falls down i will try to see till when the pullback lasts and then i will set a good tight stoppers and then try to buy but currently i can't be a buyer because i cannot define my stop loss 
So Shubham has asked about Bharat Electronics. Yeah. It's at a very, very crucial level. The level of 90, 90 rupees is very crucial. If this level is broken, you will get a very good breakdown for a target of 85, can even go down to 77. So the level is very crucial. Right, so the last, uh, I'll take one last uh, example, uh, doubt is ITC I've already done. So one last is uh, Bail. Bail is this last stock we'll talk about. Um, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited. Again, uh, Bail has been free falling. This is a temporary support for Bail around 28.7. This is a temporary support. If these levels are also knocked off, then you can get 26, you can get 24. So again, you have to see where you break on the upside. If you start, this is a resistance. So if you get some good buying here, you will likely to get good selling at 31.3. So we are stuck in this some kind of range, but we look for the selling side below 28. I would say can give you a sell till 27 and can give you another for the sell up till 24. Right. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you for your questions. It took a lot of time, but I loved it. Do share your remarks, your views and leave us a comment how you liked it and do share with your friends. Subscribe to our channel. So that's it for now and I'll see you next time.